So Nolan, presidential politics, primary politics, they're never boring here in Michigan. Our history is yeah. that uh, we always make news in a way that surprises people. Uh, this year was not an exception, both on the Democratic and the Republican side. We got a little bit of turmoil. Yeah, we do. I mean, there, of course, everybody focused on the uncommitted drive, the drive to get uh, voters to cast an uncommitted ballot uh, to protest Joe Biden's Middle East position and his support for Israel. I view it as a bit of a fizzle. Uh, numbers weren't that high, I don't think, to make a huge difference or to send a huge message to uh, the president. And unless that replicates in other state, I think it's just going to be a flash in a pan. It's it's a huge number, uh, 13% statewide, uh, almost 17% in Wayne County, 17% in Washtenaw County. Uh, they were hoping to get 10. Uh, that's what they said. The, the, the organizers thought that would be a, a tremendous success. They exceeded that. In so many ways, there's no way this doesn't send a message to the White House. That's why the Biden folks have been here as long as much as they have been. That's why they've been meeting with uh, uh, members of the Arab American and the Muslim community about it. I, I think that as strategy goes, uh, what, what they're after here is an audience with the president and, and some consideration for their side of this issue. I can't think of a better way to have done that. These are not people who are going to vote for Donald Trump in uh, November. Uh, no. This was and a, the administration was a... knows that. They also know that uh, you know they've got to be mindful on the other side of this issue of Jewish voters who are also very loyal Democratic voters and supporters of the, of the party. So it's a it's a delicate balancing act. I wouldn't expect this to influence the. Uh, decision making on policy in here. They make it a, a larger voice. But you know, there are a lot of um, interesting elements in the numbers here. Donald Trump lost 90,000 Republican voters in Oakland and Kent and Ottawa counties. And Ottawa, Ottawa and Oakland counties were the counties that sort of turned against him yeah. in 2020 and cost him Michigan. And so he's got the same problems in those counties this year as he had last year. But, you know, I think what we're seeing in this election that's unique perhaps to any others we've ever seen is the emergence of uh, a, a really potent voter force, the double unfavorables, the people who don't like Trump and don't like Biden and mm -hmm. are going to go into that ballot booth and either not vote for president or hold their vote nose and vote for the one they they dislike least, or vote on issues that are important to them rather than the personalities. And whether it's abortion or immigration or the Middle East, uh, I think issues will be more important than personalities perhaps this year, based yeah. on what we saw saw Tuesday night. No, I think that's right. And and then you have this other problem on the Republican side, which is uh, about to play out, which is uh, the, you know the question of leadership. And you still have caucuses yeah. to, to be held over on that side. And neither side's backing down here. Uh, Christina Cromwell still says, hey, I'm the party leader and I, I can lose in court all day, but uh, I'm not going to act any differently. What will happen, though, if she decides to go ahead and keep acting that way? Well, there's only so far you can go and define a court's order. I mean, that's serious business now. That takes it out of political squabbling and into the courts. And you know, she's been told by the court to do some very specific things, primarily to stop pretending you're the chair of the Republican Party. So she's got to start turning over the Twitter handle, uh, the empty checking account, uh, the other paperwork. Those have all got to go to Pete Holstra, who has now been recognized by the courts as the legitimate chair of the Republican Party. So I think she'll back down. But, you know, the long-term impact on the, the Republican Party of all this has been tremendous. And I don't think, even if Hoekstra is able to get people to come back together, Pete Hoekstra, the new chair, even if he's able to get everybody to come back and act as an organized civil party again, he doesn't have enough time to make it yeah. into the sort of force Republicans will need to help them win Michigan in the fall.
I, yeah, I think I think that's uh, I think that's right. I think uh, that's going to play out even more dramatically in the in the state races, in the Senate race, um, in the in the congressionals, and uh, in the state house, uh, where Republicans at one time had kind of high hopes that that they could uh, they could make some inroads. Uh, if the party is not in a position to help them in the right way. I don't know that that has much of a of a chance of happening, and it's still this hangover, I guess, from uh, the effect of Donald Trump on the party that's causing all of that. You do have a lot of people doing workarounds, uh, Rick Snyder and Bobby Shostak raising money, recruiting candidates for state house races, uh, the Senate candidates, the, the ones who have the resources, Rogers and Pinsler are planning to sort of create their own uh, surrogate state parties to do get out the vote, fundraising, uh, mailings, et cetera, uh, going through county park, using county parties for a lot of that work. So there's workarounds at the state level, you know, and, at, and in the Senate race. I think where it does get tough is to turn out a big, big vote for your presidential candidate and do the sort of organizing you need to do in the fall. I think it'd be very difficult for Donald Trump to win Michigan if the Republic, state Republican Party is in this at this level of disarray uh, between now and November. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, another primary in the books, another primary making news. Uh, Nolan, we'll talk <laughs> sure more about this in the future. <laughs> Watch One Detroit, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.